honor of the onset of spooky season, I present to you a horror story in one sentence. I saw a moth in my yarn stash. Today, we're going to do what we can to save the stash. Like any fiber artist, I'm constantly worried about moths. I've been meaning to secure the stash, and I've made half-hearted attempts with new items coming in, but I seem to have augmented my natural talent for procrastination with focus and planning issues, as well as a slight case of executive dysfunction. The catalyst came a couple of days ago when I went down to the basement craft room to cool down and find a pattern piece, and found a small fluttery insect doozering around the room. And yes, I watched it beeline into one of my open front plastic IKEA bins in my yarn shelves. There it is. That's the one. So while the husbeast was more than willing to help me immediately rip all the yarn out of the shelves and start the scourging process, I have instead taken a little time to think things through. I've purchased a few supplies to secure and deter. I've invested in a couple hundred dollar store freezer bags as well as a set of plastic zippered storage bags that will fit in my cube shelves. I also have cedar balls and lavender sachets. My stash is going to smell like my great granny's underwear drawer, but if it deters future pests, I can deal with it. My research online shows three ways of dealing with the problem. Freezing, heat, and poison. First off, I won't be using mothballs. I have enough issues with some yarn smelling garlicky, probably from lanolin or spinning oil remaining in the yarn, or some chemical used to wash or treat the yarn after spinning. Either way, mothballs make yarn stink. They can also apparently melt plastic, so that risks the man-made fiber spun into the yarn for extra elasticity and or the bin it's being stored in. Not good. My original thought had been to pull a bin, pop the skeins in the microwave, shake out the skeins outside, and then pop them into freezer bags. <laughs> Turns out that's not going to work. Due to the amount of man-made fiber spun into the yarn, the skeins could melt and or catch fire. Many knitters pop their stash into the freezer. We are currently without a deep freeze, but we've been procrastinating on purchasing one, so that's going to be our ultimate fix. One of my jobs this week was measuring, pricing, and purchasing a freezer, but it's going to take about a week for that to arrive. In the meantime, what we'll be doing is a stash inspection and quarantine. I'm going to grab the bins, starting with the one I'm pretty sure is infested, and bring them to the kitchen for inspection. It may seem like a weird place, being the place where food is prepared and consumed, but the kitchen table is easy to wipe down and keep clean. Remember, my first instinct was to nuke the suckers. I'll give the stash a good shakeout, and if I don't find any bodies, cocoons, egg granules, I'll pop things into a freezer bag and squeeze out the air. This will then go into its zippered cube bag with some cedar and lavender. Anything that's too damaged will have to go. The original bins themselves will be sprayed down with vinegar and given a good clean out, as will the shelving unit. My main objective is to inspect the yarn, protect what I can, and limit contamination. Once the freezer arrives, we'll freeze the stash for a couple of weeks. I'm hoping the bulk of the stash is okay because I've been collecting woolly materials for close to 20 years and having to throw away any of it would be heartbreaking. Get on your grubbies and let's get started. It's a hot day, so if you haven't been drinking your water, this is your prompt to go and get a glass or like me, get a bottle. didn't see anything that really screamed infestation to me. I didn't see any bug bodies, didn't see any cocoons, didn't see any larvae. Of course, you know, there could have been grit in there, in other words, eggs, but I think I got pretty much all of that with the vinegar. The shelf has been 
wipe down as well, so we're good to go on that front. Diving into that first bin was hella scary, because I wasn't sure what to expect. I didn't know if I was going to be picking something up and seeing the equivalent of maggots, or if moths were just going to start fluttering out while I was carrying it. One of those real life horror story things, right? Because you don't know what to expect. You don't know what's going to happen. You don't know whether you're going to just see like one moth just sort of flit off out of the room to go wreak havoc into something else that's in the basement, or whether, you know, it was just something that I saw once and I'll come across a little dead body somewhere. Who knows? But I'm keeping an eye out and kind of hoping I don't come across anything, if you know what I mean. First off, a big thanks to my patrons who make diversions from my sewing content possible. You have no idea how much I appreciate you. Day two was more of the same, but I had my routine down by then. Take the yarn out, give it an inspection, package it up, inspect and wipe down the bin. I found the bulk of the suspicious evidence in the bin with my Knit Picks yarn. It's like they made a beeline for my Wool of the Andes leftovers and balls of palette. So I guess it's tasty yarn and more than just color and texture for humans. Hopefully it's not too munched when I get around to knitting with it again. As far as I can tell, it should be fine. The majority of my yarn is definitely sock yarn. It's great for knitting socks, shawls, mittens, hats, and any other projects you want to make more difficult by reducing the gauge. When some folks travel, they purchase t-shirts or little spoons. I find the local yarn shop and purchase sock yarn. No, I'm not about to embark on a years-long de-stash project, at least not anytime soon. I like my stash. I'm comfortable having lots of options. I suspect if we ever move, consideration will be given to two adults, X amount of pets, a sizable collection of painted Warhammer Skaven miniatures, and a sizable stash. I am not a minimalist. I was surprised by the amount of fiber I've stashed away. Once upon a time, I was in the Into the World and Fat Cat Knits fiber clubs. I guess I should probably do more spinning. Let me know in the comments if that's something you'd like to see, because as you can probably tell, I have a lot of bags of fiber to work through. The fridge arrived, and as you can see, I have my priorities straight. Yarn, some fiber, and of course, the ice cream maker. Till next time!